guys, the common tendency that we're gonna be talking about here uh, is for the individual that tends to uh, take too much take back with their forehand ground stroke. Um, I, I see it a lot uh, taking place at the baseline and then, um, and then especially with that shorter third shot drive that's kind of in that, in that transition zone. Kind of, a, kind of a funny story about my own game. I've actually had to change my third ball when I deal with a short return that forces me to come in. Why? Because I found myself hitting a lot of out balls. Why? Because I was, I was moving through the transition zone. As my weight was coming forward, I wasn't gauging the, the take back of my swing. And so like the uh, phrase that I use is, with weight transfer, make sure to compensate your swing. Whether it's a return or whether it's you're your dealing with that shorter return that's kind of uh, pulling you in and you're trying to hit a third shot drive. Um, know that I think some of the common tendencies at the baseline with people taking too much take back is uh, maybe they're standing way too upright, uh, maybe they have way too much time and then with time the paddle gets back way too far. Uh, keep in mind that if there's a ball in your armpit, really try to keep that ball in there, keep things nice and condensed. There's no need to add way too much range of motion uh, with your forehand take back. Yeah, I think um, it's one of those shots where if you're consistently doing it from the baseline, you might uh, hit it perfect a couple of times, but there's just really not any need to take it back that far. Even if you have time, you look at Tyson, you look at some of the pros with some of the best drives, they're not overdoing it or gaining power from how far they're taking it back. They're getting their power from their lower body and really driving through the ball. And then just a general rule of thumb is, especially as we get it a little bit closer into the transition zone, then we really have to be careful with how much take back we have because we don't have as much time. And so it's all about being consistent with that contact point. And the further we go back, the tougher it is to have that consistent with the contact point. So we want to make sure that we're not relying on power only from our arm, but make sure that we're making sure that we're using our legs as well. Okay guys, first progression here. Um, we're gonna be shadow swinging six balls. We're gonna shadow swing four balls from the baseline uh, laterally, and then we're gonna move up and hit two short balls, uh, one on the forehand side and then one on the backhand side. Obviously on the backhand side, we are trying to run around it and use our strength here. Um, so just kind of give you an idea. Um, as we're doing these shadow swings, we're focused on kind of um, exaggerating our footwork, exaggerating the preparation, really just trying to be fine-tuned and be really organized uh, with our preparation here. So first ball, um, I'm gonna say unit turn and then set, shadow swing, slide over, unit turn, set, unit turn, set, unit turn, set, and then I'm gonna shadow swing a short ball, as I'm shadow swinging the short ball, the main focus here is with my weight going forward, I'm not gonna have a lot of lag back here and I'm not gonna have all this added range of motion. If there's a ball tucked in the armpit, I'm now gonna condense this or if I had a rubber band tied around my body and my arm, same idea, but I'm gonna shadow swing this, move through it, back pedal, back pedal, get my feet around it, get some space, short ball, same thing, move through it and then shadow swing. Uh, unit turn and set. Nice, unit turn and set. Unit turn and set, beautiful. Unit turn and set. Short ball, short ball, unit turn and set. Nice and condensed, back, back, back. Short ball, unit turn and set. Beautiful, that is one set, let's get, let's get two of these sets. Uh, if you wanna be ambitious, you can get four or five. Um, same thing here, unit turn and set. Beautiful, unit turn and set. Take a look at Kyle's unit turn. So he's got his unit turn, the, the hips are still pretty open, but he's uh, getting the paddle off to the side. Uh, that's the first piece of the equation. The second piece of the equation is getting to set position. Set position simply is closing the stance, beautiful. Now he's got his load on his back foot. He's using his front foot as a stabilizer. He's gonna shadow swing, get the weight going forward, lovely. Okay, unit turn and set. Beautiful, unit turn and set, up, 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 up. Very nice, okay. Uh, second progression here, now Coach Kyle uh, is gonna be seeing a ball. I will not be saying unit turn and set. It should be automatic now. Ready here, bud? Okay, first ball here. Good. Getting his feet around it, feet around it, feet around it. Good, feet around it. Okay, short, 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 short. Nice and condensed. Very good, back of the baseline, back of the baseline. Nice and condensed, up, up, up. Good, good, very good. We'll do two sets, same thing here. Ready, and go. Good, look at the take back. You know, he's, he's obviously, it's nice and fluid. It's not too tight. He's, he's still got some range of motion. This is when it gets a little, a little bit more condensed. Okay, again. Beautiful. Here we go. And we're gonna see Tyson show us how that forehand is made. Here we go. We got one here, another one here. 
Look at the preparation, look at the balance. Look at the little steps for balance before he goes. Okay, short ball here. Up to it, control the take back. All the way back, we're gonna have another short ball here. Here we go. Up to it. Very nice, look at that. Look at that roll. Okay guys, third progression of the drill here. Um, I'm gonna be acting as a teacher. Coach Kyle is gonna be acting as a student. Uh, my role is, is to feed a short return uh, that puts Kyle in a position where he has to come in and drive, uh, take into consideration that he's going to be shortening up his technique as he's, as he's in transition and as his weight's coming forward. He's going to be driving his third shot, I'm going to be hitting my fourth, and then he's going to be selective on what he should do with his fifth shot. If I were to pop it up, he's going to come in and close. Uh, if I were to punch it down, he's going to try to block. Or if I see that his drive is coming through me and it's high, I'm going to try to get out of the way. But lower level, he's just going to hit two balls. He's going to hit his drive, and then he's going to be selective on what he should do with his fifth. Higher levels, um, same sort of idea. I'm going to feed short. He's going to come in and drive. But now we're going to play the point out. Ready here? Very good, very good. Back of the baseline, back of the baseline. Okay, short return, short return. He's coming in, he's driving. Oh, very good, I like it, I like it, I like it. Nice and condensed. Same thing. Okay, I like it, yeah. Had an nothing option. nothing had wrong an option. with that. His weight's going forward, <laughs> and he sees it early enough. I think that's the big indicator. If you see it soon enough, you have license to swing. If you don't see it soon enough, or if you're not comfortable going head to head, there's no need to uh, keep fighting a losing battle. Here we go, ready? Very good, I like it, I like it. So, even though those may sting a little bit, you will never know until you let one go. So, uh, it, it, it's not bad habit, or I, I'm not creating bad habits for, for me letting some balls go if they land in. I, I'm, I'm more so just getting comfortable with letting a couple go and trying to gauge ball trajectory. This is another thing too where it's gonna be a little bit situational, I think, with who you're playing against. If I know that I play against somebody who has pretty flat uh, ground strokes and they're hitting from a lower position in the, the neutral or shallow zone, you can pretty much bet most of the time if they hit that 100% that they're not gonna be finding the court that it will go long. So if you have opponents who play with quite a bit of top spin, maybe you need to play it, but if they're hitting everything flat, usually those are, balls are gonna be going out. Yeah, so let's say, let's say, two, let's say three cues are, yeah. if you hear a elephant running through the transition zone and it's loud, that's a golden ticket that they're probably out of control and there's way too much weight transfer, correct? For sure, for sure. Another example would be low in red zone and they're trying to hit it flat. Yep. Uh, and then a, a, another example would be just way too much take back. Right, for okay. sure. Here we go. Ready here? Beautiful, I like it, I like it. Let's go a couple more here. Very good, Kyle slowed down, got planted, hit a, hit a block in the kitchen. Very good, it's a good drive, I like it. Uh. Good, 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 good. Okay, higher level. Play it out. Okay, higher level, play it out. Um, let's do it. Uh, uh. Very good, yeah, just back. I like it. Short. Uh, uh. I'm taking it. I'm taking it, Kev. Stay behind the kitchen. Taking what are you doing? You stay on your side. <laughs> Ready here, short. Uh, uh. Nice. Uh. Yeah, pretty. I like it. Uh, we're not keeping track of score. Way too competitive over here. <laughs> Ready here, short. <laughs> you can tell we've competed once or twice. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, let's go. Last one here. Last okay, one. Short, play it out. Oh, yeah. look out. Oh, gosh. He like one Bad go. time. <laughs> okay. okay, guys, drill recap here. Uh, first progression of the drill was just simple shadow swinging. We hit six balls, four at the baseline, and then two short balls. Second progression was uh, the same, same initial six balls, but we were just adding in a ball. And then third progression, lower levels, um, we had the returner uh, starting at the kitchen line. They were feeding a short return. The server was at the baseline. They were having to come up in the transition zone, drive a, a third ball that was short, and then just be selective with their fifth shot if they should uh, eat punch back, swing back, or block back based off of the fourth ball. So lower levels, it was just two balls. It was just you're driving your third, and then you're being selective on what you should do with your fifth. Higher level, same sort of scenario, but once you drove that third ball, you were to come in and play the point out.
Okay guys, uh, game here, super fun. Um, I actually use this game a lot during my camps, and so know that the scoring is a little confusing. Um, I'm acting as a returner, or if you start at the kitchen, kitchen line, you're more so acting as the returner. If you're starting at the baseline, you're acting as the server. Okay, so I'm going to feed a short return. Coach Kyle is going to come in and drive, and we're going to play the point out. The only time I can score as a returner is if I let a ball go long. Okay, the only time that I can score as a returner is if I let a ball go long, and I would not get one point, I would get two. Okay, so know that you get a two point bonus for having good tracking ability and by letting a ball go long. You can only score as a server here. Okay, so um, if Kyle were to lose the point as a server, it would be a side out. Kyle would come up and then I would scoop back. So we're gonna treat this like regular scoring. The only time when the returner can, can score is if they let a ball go long. Okay, here we go. We're gonna rock and roll here. I'm feeding short and we're gonna play the point out. Ah. That point is live. Very good. Very good. Uh, zero one. Uh, as you can see there, uh, it's probably not ideal. Uh, so great example of I probably should have taken a step back, bought myself a little time. I kind of took Kyle's bait. That's not going to happen again. Or just tried to be less aggressive with the ball. He could have dinked it back. Yeah. Mine was pretty low. Yeah. And it's tough to make these decisions in real time, but this will really, really help with making those decisions a little bit faster. And there's nothing wrong with surrendering when I recognize you've hit a good drop yep. and your court position is all the way up, right? Yeah, I still have to beat you in a dink battle right. at that point. Make me beat you twice. I like it. Uh, zero one. Uh, 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 <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> very good. Okay, so score. Uh, score is still? One, zero. Yeah, okay. So now I'm acting as the returner. Tyson's acting as a server. I'm going to feed it short. Play the point out. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry, uh, it's way too loud, sorry. Good point. <laughs> what does it take to win a point out here? Woo! Woo! It's a little physical. All right. 1-1, one, one, right? Here we go. Okay. Woo! You want to talk about that there? Okay, so I was the return, but this is the only scenario where I can score, and I'm actually going to score two points. So it's going to be 3-1. I'm going to go back. Tyson's going to act as the returner. Yep. Um, Something that I did wrong there, uh, I saw the ball short. I was a little antsy with getting up there. I probably didn't recognize actually how much time I had in that scenario. I tried to rush. With rushing, usually comes a big take back. And then also too, usually comes uh, uh, just not having uh, any sort of modification in this general area. So just keep in mind that anytime your weight's going forward on that shorter ball, keep things nice and condensed. And I think part of having a good pickleball IQ there too is I recognize the take back was a little bit further. And so I'm not for sure getting out of the way, but I'm already dialed in that there's a high probability that I do need to dodge this ball unless it barely clears the net. Yep. Okay, ready here. Score is one to three. Feeding short. Uh, and we're live. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. I like it. Uh, one, four. Yeah, very good. Good drive. One, five. Uh, yeah, very good, very good. One, six, let me go. One, six, short. Okay, I'm taking that two-pointer. Uh, saw a big take back, saw that he didn't make any sort of adjustments with his feet. When I don't hear the footsteps yep. coming, or yep. when I don't hear the um, added adjustment steps before contact, that comes to show that he's probably off balance or he's probably moving way too quickly as he's making contact. So look for that little cue, I guess, uh, uh, try, to, try to hear that, that little cue there. Yeah, and I would say, if you actually look at where my ball cleared from the net, it wasn't overly high, but Tyson already saw those cues, so he was ready to let it go before I even made contact. Six, three. Ah.
Ah, yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good point. Okay, last one here. Okay, so six four. Here we yep. go. One more. Ah. 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, guys. So game recap there. Uh, super fun game. Uh, know that. Um, it's, it's regular scoring here. I know that's kind of confusing, but uh, a lot of the games that we've been doing has been rally-based. Now we're more so playing uh, regular score, uh, half-court skinny singles, but just with a certain scenario. So um, I was acting as a I, I was acting as a returner. Coach Kyle was acting as a server. My job was to feed a ball short. Coach Kyle was in a position where he was coming in, he was driving, and then we're playing the point out. The only time that the returner can actually score in this scenario is if they have good tracking ability and if they let a ball go long. Uh, so just keep in mind that we're, we're shooting for regular scoring here. Uh, uh, the side that's a returner is going to be feeding short, serving side is coming in and driving, and then we're playing the point out. So a couple of different mindsets we want to tap into here. When we're acting as the server or the person who's going to be running in for the short ball, we want to run in under control. We want to modify our take back. We're trying to hit a, um, a solid drive at our opponents. And then for the next ball, we're just basically taking what they give us. If I see that it's hit up a little bit, I want to come in and close and stay on the offensive. If Tyson were to really stick the volley downward, I'm looking to just be that wall play that shot uh, softly, make a little half volley, and then get up and neutralize and do my best from there. On the flip side, when we're acting as the returner, this is where we really want to try to up our pickleball IQ. Um, Tyson talked about listening for big clunky feet, having way too much momentum coming in, um, not really breaking down. Also, seeing that bigger take back are two really big cues for um, already thinking, you know what, I'm probably going to get out of the way of this unless it's exceptionally, exceptionally low. Keep in mind too that as you're driving, if you're not comfortable going, going um, head to head with your opponent or maybe you're playing against somebody who has a really powerful paddle and they're able to take pace and really get it down, that's probably gonna put you in a position where when you drive, there's no need to like fully crash in. You probably have to be a bit more selective with your court position off your drive um, in that scenario. Yeah, I think you just pause, you wait, you assess for a split second and just try to play the best shot that's at your disposal. But a lot of times we don't know what that's gonna be until we see what our opponents do with the volley.